Hey guys, what is going on Fly here? Before we get started on this video, I just want to apologize about my allergies. Pollen is really kicking my butt right now, so sorry if I sound nasally or whatnot. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about a new tank that's going to be added to War Thunder in 1.49 Weapons of Victory. It goes by two names, the T95 Gun Motor Carriage or the T28 Super Heavy Tank. So how this video is going to work is we'll first cover why was this tank created, then some stats about the gun it had and the armor protecting the crew, as well as some flaws this tank had. So let's get started. So why? Many of y'all somewhat know about the T95, aka the Doom Turtle. You know, that slow tank that never gets into the fight but complains that his team sucks. Yeah, that tank. By its doctrine, the T95 was developed to counter the new generations of the German heavy tanks, as well as to spearhead the advance in and through the Siegfried line. Just to explain a little about the Siegfried line, it was a highly defended line that consisted of 18,000 bunkers, tank traps, and tunnels that stretched from Cleva all the way to Switzerland. So in the perfect conditions in a prayer to RNG, the T95 was supposed to breach this line and create an opening which other tanks and forces could hold and extend. Now on to the main gun, this bad mamma jamma had a 105mm T5 E1 gun which when field tested had a muzzle velocity of 1130 meters a second. Just to put that in perspective, the German 88 only had 820 meters a second and the Soviet D25T had a velocity of roughly 806 meters a second and the mouse's or the mouse or the mice? Jeez, I don't know. 128mm clocked in at 950 meters a second. Granted that this was a late war tank design, that velocity is still kind of scary. If we take into account and think about how this tank's gun will work in the game, will it have the highest penetration value in the game shooting just AP? We'll just have to wait and see, but the good thing is it won't have a sable round. Because of the time of this tank design, APDS or armor piercing discarding sable round or shot really weren't around. Just a little fun fact, the APDS shot was designed by a French company and was first introduced on the United Kingdom's 6-pounder anti-tank gun and later the 17-pounder anti-tank gun. But again, I'm using my finger quotes, hopefully the T95 won't have a sabo round. Now on to the armor of this tank, oh my gosh. This tank's armor was massive compared to many tanks back in World War II. She had at her thickest 305 millimeters. Her lower plate had 130 millimeters of armor angled at 65 degrees, which in results makes that 300 millimeters armor effectiveness. It's insane how scary this tank is gonna be when you are facing it straight up. So how do I penetrate it from the front? The best chance of penetrating the hole is shooting the upper frontal glacius. It's only angled at two degrees, so that is going to stay at 305 millimeters, thank gosh. Shooting it in the lower glacier, as I said before, is angled at 65 degrees, so the chance of bouncing is huge. Other than that, well, the Coppola, nothing's going through if you play RB or SB. Like how I see this tank being engaged in game is that a heavy tank player going up against it will have to ask teammates to go around and flank it because he, by himself, won't be able to take him down. However, that's just a theory. A get, sorry. I've been watching too much game theory. Love that show. So why wasn't this tank ever put into moderate production or pretty much why this tank failed? Well, first off, this tank's weight was ridiculous. Not as much as a German mouse, which clocked in at 188 tons, pretty much a Boeing 777-300 ER series, but still the T95 was heavy, 95 tons heavy. It was the largest tank ever created for the US military and that still stands today. With that amount of weight, even the Ford GAF V8 gasoline powered engine delivering 500 horsepower wasn't enough to get this behemoth above 13 kilometers an hour. So any environmental factor or elevation was a huge obstacle for this tank. With all that weight, the tank designers used four tracks, two on each side to distribute the weight so it wouldn't sink on soft ground. Just thinking about that gives me the chills of how epically slow the traverse rate will be. I think trying to remotely learn or understand quantum physics would be an easier task than traversing this tank 360 degrees. So in the end, why this tank never made it to any moderate production is mainly due to how ineffective it would be on the battlefield, as well as pretty much all the bridges in Europe wouldn't be able to support it. So just to wrap up this video, when we look at this tank in real life and imagine it on the battlefield, it doesn't seem feasible at all. Slow, expensive, vulnerable, the list goes on. So how will this tank translate into War Thunder gameplay? 
Will this tank be too big to navigate some of War Thunder's maps, for example Corellia or Carpathians? Will it just spawn and go forward? Will it need to be played in a four member squad with the other three members protecting its flank? Because unlike the mouse, which can hold its own because of its secondary gun and it having a turret to rotate, the T95 won't be able to do that. With only having 10 degrees right and 11 degrees left, so 21 degrees of gun lane until traverse is necessary to aim. Let me know your thoughts about this tank in the comments below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Have a great Sunday, be safe, and I'll speak with y'all soon. Peace out, guys.